love hot Cheetos. Hot Cheetos are bomb. All right, YouTube, what's up? So today, I wanted to talk about something that's had a little bit of controversy over it. Some people are addressing it, some people haven't addressed it yet, but I think I just want to go ahead and talk about it and give my opinion on it. And that would be the 2018 Ford Focus ST, also known as the up-and-coming Focus ST Mark IV. So if you're just now coming across my channel by clicking on this video, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Hunter Rollins. I own a 2017 Focus ST3. I also, before this one, I owned a Focus ST1 that was a 2016 model. And also, I own a 1991 Mazda Miata that's sitting right here out of frame. I would say I've had mediocre experience with the Focus ST. I have an understanding of the cars. And this is all opinion based. This is an entire opinion based video and I don't want anyone to make it anything other than that. I'm not saying any of my opinions are absolutely 100% factual. It's just the way that I feel. Going into 2018 and with the release of the Mark IV um, Focus, supposedly, so far, I'm pretty sure all of this has just been speculation. I wouldn't say I've done major research, but I mean, I've watched a few videos, I've read a few articles, and it pretty much seems like nothing's for sure about the new Focus that's coming out. Um, there's been a couple teaser photos. What I've gotten from a lot of the research that I've done, it looks like Ford, in the Focus ST at least, is removing the 2 liter turbocharged engine and going to a 1.5 liter engine which may or may not be 4 cylinder. A 1.5 is pretty small for a 4 cylinder engine. So I've also heard a lot of rumor that they will be going to a 3 cylinder engine. And for me, I know that it's innovation and everybody, you know, everybody's freaking out at first until they're hearing that this 1.5 liter, three, maybe four cylinder engine is going to be pushing around 275 horsepower. I will give it to Ford. That's a big feat to be able to push 275 horsepower out of a small turbo 1.5 liter engine. I'm not saying by any means that that's not awesome, like that's incredible. Most Honda guys would drool over that. But in my opinion, when you take a smaller motor and you start pushing more and more power out of it, you run out of room to further it, if that makes any sense. The more power that you push out of a smaller motor from factory, the less that you can do to it without having to get into the internal. That, that's pretty much the biggest thing for me is it going to a smaller motor. I'm not going to say I don't like it because I don't know. I haven't experienced it. It's not out yet if it's coming out, but I, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Because even with tuning and everything, theoretically to me, it seems like there's not much farther you can go if you're already pushing 275 horsepower out of a 1.5 liter engine. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. But then again, that's just from a engine modification standpoint. If you're one of the guys that likes to keep it stock, you're not gonna have an issue with it because it's gonna have plenty of power. If you're one of the guys that only like to do aesthetic modifications, you're not gonna have an issue with it because it's plenty fast for you and you're gonna be able to modify the car aesthetically. So there's a lot of different point, points of views that you can look at it from and a lot of different stances that you can look at it from where there's no issue going to a smaller motor because it's it's still pushing a lot of power from factory which is absolutely incredible I'm not denying that but for me it's just it's kind of difficult seeing the things that you can push from these two liters I mean to sum it up I just don't know how I feel about it I'd have to see it and I'd have to drive it and I would have to see people modifying it to know, but the math's just not adding up in my head. On Autocar, it says that Ford is believed to be looking at twin scroll turbocharging, direct injection, and sealer deactivation technology to deliver the required power boost and fuel economy to make the next Focus ST a practical proposition. So forget about the twin scroll turbocharging and the direct injection. 
that's whatever. The thing that scares me is cylinder deactivation. For those who don't know what cylinder deactivation is, it's where if you're driving down the highway, say at 50 miles an hour, if you're maintaining that speed, the car, the computer is going to tell itself, hey, I'm using this extra cylinder and it's burning more fuel and I don't need to use that. So let's just, so just cut it. So what it does is it deactivates the cylinder and if you're a four cylinder, it'll go down to a three cylinder and it'll only be running off that three cylinders. Not necessarily misfiring, it just kind of deactivate that cylinder like that cylinder's not even there. And Chevy has been doing this for a long time, especially in their, uh, their trucks and the Tahoes and things like that. It's not a bad idea. It's something else that can go wrong, you know? The Focus STs already have a ton of electro electronic technology in it that malfunctions. I know people all the time who their windshield wipers randomly come on. And the thing that scares me is what if you're just driving around and your cylinder and you get a glitch and your cylinder is constantly deactivating. Especially when the car gets older. When you're out of warranty and that happens, you're looking at the cost to fix that is, is expensive. And especially if you want to start modifying. If you want to start modifying and you want to tune your car, like that's asking for trouble if you have that cylinder deactivation especially with it being a first year I know Chevy's been doing it a long time but we all know that Chevy that Ford can't just 100% copy Chevy and in, in what they do like they can't do that they're gonna have to make their own thing and they're gonna have to test this and pretty much this next Focus ST if it does have this cylinder deactivation is going to be um, the, the guinea pig for for this and so I predict a lot of issues and a lot of recalls and a lot of warranty a, a lot of warranty claims on this car the cosmetic features of this Mark IV Focus ST looking at it from the back I'll include a picture of what it what it supposedly might look like from behind. Like I said, all of this is just rumor. There's nothing official that's been released. But if this is what this car is going to look at, let's look at it from behind. So if you look, starting with the the diffuser at the bottom, um, it looks like they did try to incorporate more of a diffuser look to the car. The post facelift focus is just sad. That little piece of plastic on the back is just hideous. And I do like how they went away from the center exit single exhaust to the the dual exit exhaust. I'm not I'm not necessarily a huge fan of the center exit. Um, I was at first, but the more that I've the, that I've had it. I don't I don't know if I like it. The hatch has more of a fiesta style hatch to it and a and like a fiesta spoiler which I don't like. It's a focus, it's not a fiesta. The tail lights are okay. I don't really have a positive or a negative opinion about them. They're just kind of there. So the bottom half of the rear end I like. I like what they did with it. I like how they changed it up. But the top half I'm not a fan of. It feels more like stock Fiesta SE to me. It looks like they moved the gas cap from the right to the left side of the car. Moving on to the front of the car, the front clip, I'm not a fan of. It looks like it has the Mark III Focus hood, so there's not much that has changed there. But as far as the very front end, like it just screams. If you're just looking at the bumper, the top half of the bumper, screams stock focus like focus s not even a focus se it says focus s and then the bottom half is like they tried to incorporate the rs in there somehow it doesn't make any sense to me i don't think it fits i i don't like it but that's just my opinion some people might like it some people might not that's just how i feel if those are the wheels that are going to be on this car if they're actually going to design them like that in person I like that. I will say I like that more than I like the um, the snowflake wheels. So other than that, I think that pretty much sums up my thoughts on the 2018 Mark IV Focus ST. 
I've said this a ton of times, but I just don't know how I feel about it. Um, and that's just my opinion. There's some people that aren't going to care about aesthetics, or they're, and they're going to care about the motor. There's some people that won't care about the motor, and that will care about the aesthetics. And so there's many different views that you can look at about this car. I want you to let me know your opinion. Let me know what you think about this possible Mark IV Focus ST. What you think about it. Do you think they should stay with the 2 liter? Do you think they should bring the 1.5? What do you feel about the cylinder deactivation? Like, how do you feel about that? Do you think that's a perk, or do you think that's a negative? Do you think that's just asking for trouble? I'm really looking forward to the car actually having a model coming out, or having a model come out so that I can actually go put my eyes on it, and then be able to, to decide whether or whether or not I like it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like. The more people that like the video, the more people that it gets suggested to, and the more people find this channel. If you want to see more opinion or kind of review videos like this, this is my first time actually giving this a shot, comment down below let me know. If you want to see more of me and my Focus and my Miata, then subscribe and follow along. I'd love to see you come back here. I hope you have a great day. Keep your head up and stay positive. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.